you all for being here today. Um, and uh, thank you especially to uh, PAWS, the uh, people of Albany, United for Safe Energy, uh, who will be taking us on a tour of the uh, bomb trains uh, immediately after this uh, press conference. Um, so it's, it's really a pleasure to be here, uh, really at the outset of our exploratory presidential campaign, uh, where we are embarked on a listening tour when other uh, mainstream presidential candidates test the waters, they go behind closed doors to see what kind of money they can raise. Uh, when we test the waters, we are reaching out to frontline communities to see if we can serve the, uh, the causes and the justice that they deserve. So that's how we're testing the waters. And it's a real honor to be here in New York State where there's so much good work going on. And, you know, in many ways this is an historic moment and movements, grassroots movements for democracy and justice are sweeping the nation, even the planet, in fact. And uh, everyday people and grassroots communities who are at the forefront of economic and ecological crisis are standing up to demand solutions now, which are within our reach and within our hands. Uh, and there are several examples of that, really shining examples that I want to mention that we have been and will be connecting with uh, on this several day swing through the state. So uh, first and foremost, the bomb trains. And I'll just summarize to say that these are essentially weapons of mass destruction that have been regularly detonating every seven to 14 weeks with either major derailments or uh, very significant explosions and toxic spills. And they are importantly going through population centers and particularly through Albany, which is you know, a critical point of transfer. <clears throat> so it puts the people of Albany particularly at risk and after the uh, explosion in Lac Megantic, Quebec, in July of 2013, it's astonishing that almost two years have gone by and there are no new federal safety rules. This is absolutely a disgrace. And it's a credit to the communities that you are standing up and insisting that, um, uh, that measures be taken immediately. And I will mention just one in particular that would be so uh, comprehensive and so helpful. And that would be uh, basically to, for the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation to declare the bomb trains a, an imminent hazard, a clear and present danger to the people as well as to the natural resources of New York State and order that they cease and desist until such time as those dangers are remedied. Um, that is something that the Department of Environmental Conservation has the capacity to do, has the legal authority. Uh, they could shut down this imminent terrible hazard to health and safety right now. And um, we join those many voices here at the local and state level that are calling on the, the Department of Environmental Conservation to do the right thing. Um, and I'll mention also at a, at a higher level of solution, uh, I support many people in New York who are now calling for a truly definitive solution, which is not just to put these trains, these bomb trains, and this very dangerous fuel on pause and on hold, but to render it obsolete and to make this the beginning of an emergency transition to 100% clean, renewable energy, wind, water, and sun by 2030. We know that it can be done. In many ways, New York State has been leading the call. Advocates within the state have been leading the call. And studies have shown, in fact, that if New York State was to do this, not only would it reduce massively the energy requirement here, it would save 4,000 New York lives every year. So talk about health and safety hazards. There is the immediate safety hazard of the bomb trains. And then there's this chronic hazard, which we've just sort of grown accustomed to because it happens slowly. 4,000 people are dying every year needlessly, premature deaths related to fossil fuel pollution. New York State would also save $33 billion every year 
um, that itself would be enough to pay the costs of the transition. Simply the savings in health. That doesn't even factor in the savings in energy when you move to a zero energy requirement. You are purchasing zero fuel once you've transitioned to 100% uh, wind, water, and sun. So these are massive savings. Add to that the massive savings in the uh, Department of Military uh, expenditures, where we are likewise spending a trillion dollars a year, all told, across the military industrial security complex. When we are not fighting wars for oil, uh, for gas, for other natural resources, uh, those wars uh, basically become obsolete and there are enormous resources that can be put back into the economies and the critical needs that we're feeling so acutely throughout New York.